In this lesson, I am going to discuss matrix representations with respect to bases that are no longer the standard ordered bases. Suppose that we have this linear transformation here from R2 to R3. Let us first get its matrix representation with respect to the standard bases of R2 and R3. Hence, we are getting the matrix representation from B to B prime. In order to do that, we have to get first the images of the basis elements of R2. T of 1, 0 is equal to 1 plus 2 times 0, so that's 1. Negative x1 is negative 1 and then 0. T of 0, 1 is equal to 0 plus 2, 0, 0. And take note that this is also the coordinate vector with respect to the standard basis of R3. So therefore, the matrix representation from B to B prime is just the matrix whose columns are 1, negative 1, 0, and 2, 0, 0. Now suppose this time around, my bases are no longer the standard bases. We have here 3, 1, 5, 2, and this column vectors over here. Again, we want to find the matrix representation from B to B prime. In order to do that, we have to get first T of 3, 1. That's equal to 5, negative 3, 0. And T of 5, 2, that's equal to 5 plus 4, 9, negative 5, 0. If I call this W1, W2, and W3, we have to write this as linear combinations of W1, W2, and W3. And the coordinate vectors would be a1, a2, a3, and then here the coordinate vectors will be b1, b2, b3. But this would mean that we still have to solve two systems of linear equations. That will take much more time as compared when we were solving for the matrix representation with respect to the standard basis, correct? How are these two matrix representations related. So that is the problem that we will discuss in this lesson. If we are given a linear transformation and then I have two ordered bases for the domain and two ordered bases for W, how are these two matrix representations related? To answer that question, let us recall this theorem that we had in our previous video lectures. This concerns the matrix representation of the composition of linear transformations. The matrix representation of the composition is just equal to the product of the matrix representations. Now suppose that we have a linear transformation from V to W. Then we can write this linear transformation as the composition of itself with the identity linear operators on V and W. W. Let me illustrate what is happening here. I have the vector spaces V and W. The linear transformation from V to W can be written as first you get the identity linear operator from V to V. So this is identity linear operator and V and then you get T and then from W to W this is the identity linear operator on W. This linear transformation from V to W can be obtained by first going through this applying the identity linear operator and V this one followed by T this one and then followed by the identity linear operator on W. Suppose that I get a pair of ordered bases for V and also for W. 
let's say I have s and then here s prime this is r prime and this is for r what we want to do is to find out what is the relationship between the matrix representation of t from s to r and the matrix representation of t from s prime to r prime if we will use the previous theorem we will represent this identity linear operator as the matrix representation of the identity from s prime to s and then here we will represent this by the matrix representation of the identity linear operator and w from r to r prime since this composition is equal to this therefore we can represent the matrix representation of t from s prime to r prime as first applying this but it is on the right because this is composition of functions from s prime to s and then followed by the matrix representation of t from s to r and then lastly this one the matrix representation of i from r to r prime so this is how these two matrix representations are now related and this is the theorem Notice that if you have matrix representations from different bases, you want to start from S prime to R prime. So that's why you have to get the matrix representation of I from S prime to S and then S to R. And then to go to R prime, you have to get the matrix representation of I from R to R prime. Let us recall that this matrix representation is also called the change of basis matrix from R to R prime. Suppose that our linear transformation is a linear operator and let's have two ordered bases for V. If we will use this result, what is now the relationship between the matrix representation of T with respect to S prime and the matrix representation of T with respect to S? First, I want to have matrix representation from s prime to s prime so i will have here the change of basis matrix from s prime to s because this is s and then we have from s to s but i want to end up with s prime so i still have the change of basis matrix starting from s you have to go to s prime and let us recall that these two change of basis matrix or transition matrices are inverses of each other this is the result now suppose that a and b are matrices of the same dimension we say that a is equivalent to b whenever there exists invertible matrices p and q such that a can be written as b and then you have the uh, invertible matrices here p and q inverse now take note that since we had this earlier, this is our A and this is our B. And what can we say about these two matrices? Recall that any transition matrix is invertible, correct? So we can take this as our P and this is our Q inverse. So meaning to say our Q is equal to the transition matrix from R prime to R. Let us recall that the inverse of a transition matrix is also another transition matrix, but the bases are just interchanged. So, therefore, these two matrix representations are equivalent. So, we have seen here that if we have a linear transformation, then their matrix representations are equivalent. Now, the converse of that is also true. If we have two matrix representations which are equivalent, then they represent the same linear transformation. 
So that is given by this result. Two matrices are representation of the same linear transformation with respect to different pairs of ordered bases if and only if they are equivalent. Now, what do we mean by similar matrices? In this case, it's like they are equivalent, correct? Except that this matrix here has to be P also. We have P and then P inverse because for the definition of equivalent matrices, we have P and then Q inverse. But when this matrix happens to be P as well, then we say that they are similar. Since we had this result earlier, the relationship between the matrix representation of a linear operator with respect to two different bases, but if you look at this one and this one, what are they? This is a transition matrix, so it is invertible, and this is its inverse. So therefore, these two are similar. The matrix representation of a linear operator with respect to two bases are going to be similar. Just like what we had with equivalent matrices, if two matrices are also similar, then they are going to be matrix representation of the same linear transformation. Let us go back to the example that we had earlier. And we want to compute the matrix representation of T from B to B prime, but this time around, these are no longer the standard basis for R2 and R3. Here, I have the standard basis from R to S. So what I will do is we will make use of the theorem. To compute for the matrix representation of T from B to B prime, this is just equal to the matrix representation from R to S. This is using the standard basis. But then we will have a change of basis matrix. You want to start from B. So you have from B to R. Take note, B and R are basis for R2. And then you have change of basis matrix from S to B prime because that is where you want. Look at the chain, B to R, R to S, S to B prime. We already obtained this matrix representation. So all we have to do is to get this transition matrices. First, take note that what is the change of basis matrix from B to R. B is this one, and R is just the standard basis. So therefore, the coordinate vectors of this, let us recall that this is equal to, you have to get the coordinate vectors of B with respect to R. But since R is your standard basis, the coordinate vector of this with respect to the standard basis is just itself. So we have 3, 1, 5, 2. What about the change of basis matrix from S to B prime? You're starting from S, you want to go to B prime. But S is the standard basis. It's not that easy to get the coordinate vectors of this with respect to this basis, correct? So what we will do instead is to get the change of basis matrix from B prime to S and then get its inverse. Because the change of basis matrix from B prime to S, it's easier to compute. And it is just equal to this matrix, we will just copy 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Again, the explanation is similar to what we had in here. We are getting the coordinate vectors of this with respect to the standard basis, but it will turn out to be just equal to itself. This is change of basis matrix from B prime to S, and then we are going to get its inverse. Upon calculating its inverse, this is going to be equal to. And lastly, the matrix representation of T with respect to the standard basis for R2 and R3, we already computed that here. It is equal to this matrix.
And therefore, this matrix representation from B to B prime is equal to the product of these three matrices. We just have to substitute from S to B prime, that is this matrix, times the matrix representation from R to S. times the matrix representation from B to R. And this is equal to this matrix. Let us verify this matrix. By definition, the columns here would be the coordinate vector of the image of U1 with respect to B prime and then the coordinate vector of T of U2 with respect to B prime. Let us first compute T of U1. T of U1 earlier was 5, negative 3, 0. And T of U2 is equal to 9, negative 5, 0. So let us check. Is this equal to 8 times the elements in B prime? So you have W1, 1, 0, 0, minus 3 times 1, 1, 0. This is just 0, so I will no longer write that. This is 8 minus 3, 5. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Correct. But about for this one, so it's 14 times 1, 0, 0. Minus 5 times 1, 1, 0. 14 minus 5 is 9. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Correct. So therefore, this is really the matrix representation of T from B to B prime. Let us consider this linear transformation. And let us find the matrix representation of T with respect to 1, 1 minus x and the square of 1 minus x. Again, I will first get the matrix representation of this with respect to the standard basis, that is 1x and x squared. And to get the matrix representation with respect to b, I will make use of the matrix representation of t with respect to the standard basis. But this time, I will just multiply this by, since you want to start with b, you have change of basis matrix from b to b prime then you have b prime to b prime and then change of basis matrix from b prime to b so that you will end up with b what is the change of basis matrix from b to b prime let me call this u1 u2 and u3 we just have to get the coordinate vectors of the elements of b u1 with respect to b prime. b prime is the standard basis. So therefore, what is the coordinate vector of u1 with respect to b prime? That is just 1, 0, 0. Because 1 is equal to 1 times 1 plus 0 times x plus 0 times x squared. The coordinate vector of u2 is 1, negative 1, 0 because it's 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times x plus 0 x squared. And then 1 minus x squared is 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So that's why the coordinate vector is 1, negative 2, 1. And then to get the transition matrix from b prime to b, That is just the inverse of this matrix. It's the inverse of the change of basis matrix from B to B prime. Upon computing the inverse of this, you can verify that the inverse of this matrix is just equal to itself. So the only thing that we need is the matrix representation of T with respect to the standard basis. 
We already computed this in our video lecture on matrix representations, the first one, part one. It's equal to this matrix. So therefore, the matrix representation of T with respect to the basis B is equal to the product of these three matrices. This is equal to this. This is this matrix. When you multiply these three matrices, you will get this matrix. 1003309189. Let us verify the matrix representation that we obtained. By definition, this is equal to the coordinate vectors of the images with respect to B. What is T of U1? That is T of 1 and it's just equal to itself because the transformation just replaces any occurrences of x by 3x minus 5. T of U2 is T of 1 minus X. So that's 1 minus quantity 3X minus 5 or 6 minus 3X. And lastly, T of U3, which is T of 1 minus X squared. This is equal to 1 minus... 3x minus 5 quantity squared. This is 6 minus 3x squared. Or 36 minus 36x plus 9x squared. Looking at T of U1 again, from here it's equal to 1 times 1 plus 0 times 1 minus x plus 0 times the square of 1 minus x, which is correct. Then t of u2, since the coordinate vector is 3, 3, 0, this, this is equal to 3 times 1 plus 3 times 1 minus x plus 0 times 1 minus x squared. This is 3 plus 3 minus 3x. Three Correct. And lastly, our t of u3, which we obtained to be 36 minus 36x plus 9x squared, is this equal to 9 times u1 plus 18 times u2 plus 9 times u3 or 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So we have 9x squared minus 36x plus 9 plus 18 is 27 plus 9 which is 36. So this is really correct. So therefore we really obtain the correct matrix representation of T with respect to B. This lesson tells us that if the basis is not the standard basis, what you need to do is to first get the matrix representation with respect to the standard basis and apply the theorem, wherein you have to multiply the matrix representation that you obtained with transition matrices.